Hello and welcome to Muddy Paws Crime Live. Um, tonight we have with us the owners, Angela and Giles, of the Missing Norfolk Terriers, Margie and Ruby. Um, thank you very much, Angela and Giles, for coming back for a fresh appeal for them. Thank you um, for having us. Oh, that's okay, any time. Um, so we'll start by, obviously, a lot of people know about Margie and Ruby, but we want to reach people that don't know about them and to get as many shares as possible, uh, people looking out for them. So if you can start by telling us what breed they are, how old they are, where they went missing from and when, and obviously the circumstances as much as you're aware. Okay, uh, well, they are Norfolk Terriers. Uh, Ruby was two last August after they went and Margie was three last October. They were taken on the 24th of June, 2021, we um we took them out for a normal morning walk and there's a little bit of woodland uh near our house and they ran in there like they did every single morning and usually within 10 minutes they'd come back to my office where they'd asked to come in and that morning they didn't come in they were wearing gps trackers at the time so we know it was only 10 minutes after we saw them that the trackers were turned off and um and that's the last that we've seen of them and we thought initially maybe that they'd gone to ground so we spent three weeks turning everything upside down digging out every hole we had search dogs we had working dogs in we used thermal cameras we used microphones down holes and then we just dug out every hole in a huge radius even tiny holes that there's no way one terry would get down there again too it's just like well so uh, we've got a whole load of trenches left now. We, you know, very fortunate that we were able to do that, and also that we have friends with with diggers and things that they lent us to to help. But so it was only three weeks later that we were like, well, they're not here, and what's happened? And whilst we're searching, people kept saying they're not here, they've been stolen, and we kept saying no, of course they haven't. We'll find them, and so we lost that vital first three weeks where we just were looking on farm and that's my my biggest regret that we didn't start searching off farm whilst we were still searching on yeah well you did all you could i mean nobody expects a dog theft to happen to them um you know you did the right thing that you thought was right at the time and obviously the type of dog that they are it was likely that they could have gone into, you know, any holes or anything. So you, you definitely did, you know, the right thing. So don't ever feel guilty for that. Um, so obviously you live, um, where you live, there's a um, vast area of fields and everything. Um, so sort of adjoining farms or anything like that, did they have a look on theirs? Or is it would it just kind of be impossible for Margie and Ruby to actually access their land? Well, it's. I, I think the fact that we, because we had the GP, GPS trackers on them, and you know, because they they lived a, 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 a you know, a life of Riley, but we could always track them, and and the GPS trackers work on two levels, so they're either on standby, which means they give a, an approximate position, but it, it, but you know, so had they gone 200, 300 meters away from where we last saw them we would have got a ping on that. If you then set the GPS trackers to, to live tracking, then they give a much more accurate picture on it. Um, so even though they were on the sort of standby uh, transmission sort of, sort, of, sort of setup, you know, ha had they gone 200 meters, 300 meters in any other direction in a couple of minutes, we would have got a ping from that. Now, it might not have been that accurate, but it, but it would have been you know, it, it would have told us that they were roughly here or roughly just over in that field or 100% oh, they are over in the next field, you know. So so because of that, we, we've got a pretty good idea, you know, at, at the time and, and the position of which they went. And by that, I mean 200, 300, 400 metres, you know. So we know no matter how inaccurate they would have been at that time, that's 
you know, they would have been somewhere with, within that area. So, so they were definitely somewhere in that. You know, have, and and it was the would've... fact that they both went off at pretty much identical times, and and such like, you know, again at the time you kind of think, you know, we, we you know, perhaps that's the point that they went down a hole or something. But you just start adding it up, and you start realizing that no, they that they, they were. Well, there isn't a hole left in you know, that area. Yeah. There's just trenches yeah. where they used to. I mean, when we didn't even find a rabbit, you know, there was nothing. In fact, I put a wildlife camera in the bit of woodland for three weeks, just so if I saw any rabbits, I could see which direction they go to give me, a, you know, did they, and not a single rabbit in that entire three weeks. And not a single hole dwelling creature, unless you count field mice. I did see two field mice. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, you know, we're not talking just about one dog missing here. You've got two dogs yeah. that went at the same time. And, and, and um, that's clear. When you start adding all these bits together, you then suddenly start thinking, you know, both, you know, it's a prize, isn't it? And and you think, well, who, who's going to be that? Who's going to be that that, you know, ballsy to come down a, a, a farm track in the middle of nowhere and go and take them? And then you think, well. What would they be flogging them on for, or what would they be? You know, they they had such a value. It was, it was right at the, you know, the peak of lockdown and everything else. So I mean, you know, they they could have moved. People are spending stupid amounts of money online to buy dogs. So they were six grand for the pair. You know, that's what we saw them being not. You know, that's what we saw similar dogs being sold for at the time. So yeah, I could imagine somebody being ballsy enough to walk down there because if they had got caught, they would have gone. Oh, sorry, mate, I'm lost. You know? And you know, and we have people down here a lot, you know, and half the time, well, I never used to think much of it because we've got um, organic vegetables growing and so all the workers are down here. We have friends who come walking down here and without my glasses, I can't see that far. So, um, you know, it's just, I, I, you know, I'd see someone walking and just wouldn't think anything of it. I think, oh, it's just something to do with the vegetables or it's, you know, it's somebody and I just can't recognise them because I've got glasses on and not even, I don't know, we're just so trusting. We we never thought. Well, you just but, don't expect, you know, people who, have, you know, just left the dog in the car for 30 seconds to go and post a letter. You know, we, 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 we we're living in a world where you don't expect your dog to be, we thought Stolen. because of the trackers they were safe um and 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 we are well, we unfortunately were, you know because we don't have fencing but we knew where they were all the time and as soon as they the, the trackers have got like a virtual fence and as soon as they pass that fence your phone pings to tell you so the, we've got the fence quite tight so if they go too far from home then we know and then one of us can go and get them back um, so it, it it kind of um can be clear as well that you know, this was a planned theft. Um, they knew maybe they had trackers, maybe to think back who might yeah. have known the information. Um, and they knew how to turn them off. Yeah. Yeah, and you can actually, you know, it's not difficult. It, it, if you knew what the what the track, you know, if you'd seen one before or used one before, it is basically you clip it, it comes off the collar, and you do that, and you disconnect the battery because you charge the battery every couple of days. You know, so if you knew what the piece of kit was, you could disable it in 20, 10, five seconds. You know, it's literally, take that off, that's it. It turns off. And that's the point at which it stops transmitting. So when you're monitoring it, that's the point at which it says transmission lost. You know, and, and so, yeah. So again, that only to me points in the direction that these guys knew what they were dealing with and, and instantly recognized or even possibly knew from, you know, from they'd heard some, who, who knows, Lisa, who knows. But it, to I me, know, it, it, it did know. Um, yeah. these guys were um, prone to be able to disable it that quickly. They knew what they were doing. Unfortunately, you know? yeah. Um, I'll just say, we've just got a couple of Tina and Karen um, in the comments. Um, they're just saying about sightings rem a reminder. Um, we have spoken about that before the live, and we will be bringing up about the sightings just to keep your minds at rest. So thank you for that. Um, so just moving on from that, um, obviously, when did you call the police? How soon after and sort of how helpful have they been through the ordeal? So we've had um, 
uh, um, contact with Devon and Cornwall police, obviously, because we're in Cornwall and I cannot praise them more highly. I think we were a bit hesitant to go to them because you you would kind of expect them to sort of go, you know, your dog's missing, you know, what, 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 you know, what, do, what do you want us to do about it? Um, from Devon and Cornwall's point of view, Devon and Cornwall Constabulary, we were assigned, we were given a crime reference number immediately and we were assigned a police officer who has been incredible. You know, I, I, I cannot even, we've phoned them up, we've had sightings, she has uh, um, ob obtained CCTV of what, you know, I, I cannot say how brilliant they have been. And then in sharp contrast to that, we've dealt with other constabularies where it's taken four days of hammering, and you know this because you did an awful lot of hammering, uh, just to get a response uh, to, to something that was even more definite than our dog's missing. This was a dog that we thought was one of the girls, and yeah. we had picture evidence of it, we had names, we had locations and everything, and they did absolutely jack to, to, to help, you know. So this is the contrast. So why can one constabulary be absolutely fantastic and take this seriously? Because it is an incredibly serious crime, and yet others just not be bothered, you know. And that, that they... I, I kind of hate the concept of naming and shaming, but 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 I and and we haven't done that, but I really do want to do it because it has been so frustrating and and you know. I do feel we're very lucky from that point of view being in Cornwall and having the police force that we have. But I didn't actually ring them. I think it was it was about the three week mark when I rang them to report it as 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 stolen, um, and I only did that because. I was told to do it because at the time I was still like, oh, I don't know with it, and I don't know. I just, but they were so amazing. Our, our police case officer in particular. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with a lot of different forces around the country, and I have to agree with you. Devon and Cornwall have been, I would say, the best. Um, you know, other forces should take note of um, how they care yeah. about pet theft. I mean. I, I can't talk about it, but I'm actually dealing with them also on an animal welfare case um, in the Devon area. Um, and they've also been fantastic at communication, which communication is key, especially for an owner when you're going through such turmoil. You just want to know you're being listened to and yeah. things are being addressed. Um, so th the positive is if there are sightings in the area, you have got, you know, them that will listen to you. Yeah. Um, so just to go back, uh, obviously Ruby and Margie, I am aware they're both microchipped, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And um, have there been any scans at all since they've been missing to the present day? No, we, we, we've certainly, there's been no notification on any, uh, any of the databases that, that we're aware of. But again, as you know, that system is... In, inherently flawed because it is so uh, um, segmented and in, and in the hands of different people and different companies and we know that there are breakdowns that occur um, so it's it's not a you know it, 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 it's it's not a, a a solid enough system um, and yeah. uh, I thousand percent agree not, with you there <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and so it, there is this big, and you know, all, all the work, particularly with, you know, the, I don't like to pick individual people because so many people are doing so much, but you know, the, the, the drive to, to, to uh, go for a single database uh, is, is absolutely essential. Absolutely. There needs to be a sort of, you know, this commercial, you know, it's, it's exactly, you know, we, we've grown up in a generation where, you know, there, there's, there's been numerous you know, computer companies that ping up and do this and do that and do that, and then they fail and just a couple get through. So I understand the idea, the concept of, you know, it has to be a commercial thing, but that's the government saying we don't want to have responsibility off it. That, that, that's all that is. That's the government saying, we'll hand it over to the private sector and they can sort it out and they'll do a better job. You know, well, unfortunately, it's too segmented and it's too broken up. Um, you're asking people who want, you're asking companies who want to take a commercial lead and get ahead of the others. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
but in the process of that they will not share their information or, or, or make that readily available so this is something that needs to be in the control of the government to have registered you know as like your number plates on your cars on your you know on on, on you know they, it needs to be seen in the same way as that and more importantly cars oh, of course yeah, that's what i'm saying so you do it for cars and you do it for cars and they do it for cars because of crime well we're doing it for the same reason because of crime that occurs with dogs both ways dogs that are you know, that have been you know that are problematic dogs it works both you know it, it works both ways uh and i think any yes there may possibly be a cost involved with it well any responsible dog owner must accept that there is a ongoing cost with the dog so you know i i, I don't think i'd have a problem with you know a, a two pounds a year or something fee that, that goes in there and, and i know there's issues about well the admin costs are going to be higher etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I you know let, let's work that bit out um or move over to smart snout yeah which you know, you yeah, yeah. Um, Brad, Brad, Brad will be coming back on um, hopefully within the week um, and giving some updates about Smarts now. Yeah, but that, that, that. it is time, as much as you know, it is law, you get your dog's microchip, so please keep doing so. However, there are so many flaws that need to be addressed um, and times move forward, and we know that something new has to come into play. Um, so I know this is a, again a really difficult question for you, but it is part of the reason we're doing these lives to show the impact to thieves, uh, police, and government. Um, since the girls have been stolen, what's the impact it's had on you personally and your extended family? Uh, well, I mean, you know, you, you, you can see from the response whenever you. Uh, you know, yeah, it's hard. It, it's a hard I, question the, to the answer. I know it feels for you. Yeah, uh, you know, I've, I've said I've said it before, and so I apologise if people are hearing it again. But it would be so so easy if they were dead. You know that 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 that's the situation you find yourself in. That would be a yes, walk so. in the park if they were dead. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, I often say, um, and you know, Wendy Andrew, we've had on a couple of times a pet bereavement counsellor. When your dog passes away, it, 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 it's hard enough to cope with, but when you don't know what's happened to your dog, you're yeah. right, Angela. Yeah, um, you know, your, your mind's in emotional turmoil all the time, you have no closure, it's um you, you know the thoughts i, I mean I, I just feel for you so much um we and all the owners four but... dogs we have four dogs in three years we lost two to old age and that's when we got Margie and ruby and i thought at least we're not gonna have to go through this again for a long time when we got them if anyone's watching this and has any information you can see that it, this is destroying a family you have to speak up you don't have to get in trouble please don't have to be involved they just want the babies back just please <laughs> let the girls okay. go home but they're okay if i knew they were okay it would be easier to live with sorry anybody yeah we just plead for any information you know friends family um if you're part of the crime and not now just, just people know where these girls are please speak up you might be afraid to speak up thinking you're going to be arrested you you can speak to the group you can speak to muddy pools crime it's about the girls going home it's not about punishment they just want their girls home that that's it point blank um, i'm too tired to worry about revenge or punishment just yeah. just if my girls um i'm going to be showing some photos and a few videos um would you prefer to speak about the sightings before 
or would you like me to do the little slideshow first to give you a little bit of a break from talking? Uh, no, do the little slideshow now, and and then we'll. Okay, but right, I'm just going to share my screen um, and show you some photos of Margie and Ruby and a few videos. I apologise in advance if it goes wrong. Uh, my laptop has been playing me up of late. Um, but if it does, we will put the link into the comments with Angela and Joel's permission for you to be able to see. Okay, so if you bear with me. So this is the Facebook group, Help Find Margie and Ruby, Stolen Norfolk Terriers. If you are part of the group, um, if you can please, please keep sharing. If you're not part of the group, can you please join and, of course, do as many shares as possible. They are also on Twitter and you can find them at Find Margie Ruby. We will put these links into the comments also. I'm going to show some photos and videos now. You can see by the photos alone how close the girls are and how close the family is. Please let them go home. Thank you. 
must have been very difficult for you to watch. Yeah. I think I feel like I'm used to the videos and pictures that we use. But then... so, this so, shows how yeah. close the family are. Margie and Ruby love you as much as you love them. You know, whoever's watching this, there's no words for you. You might have fought them in good faith as well. But they're not your dogs. They belong to Angela and Giles. And we keep repeating, you won't get in trouble. That can be arranged. Just let the girls go home. Okay. I think we belong to them rather than the other way around. <laughs> okay, so yeah. th th there's going to be, um, as we will talk about now, um, there have been some sightings, haven't they? And um, I've asked Andrew and Giles to also pop these into the comments later um, of the areas where these sightings have been, uh, especially leading up to a weekend, leading up to summer, when the weather's nice. Please, please, please keep a lookout for the girls in these areas. Okay, I'll hand over to you. So, well, we've got we've got a few quite different um, areas of the country that there's been sightings or possible sightings recently. So, um, the closest to us is at Plimbridge Woods, just outside Plymouth. Um, on a Monday evening, a gentleman was seen walking with two Norfolk Terriers, who were off lead, but definitely with him. Um, the person who saw them says she's never seen a Norfi there. I have been in touch with Norfi owners that I know in the area, and they've all said that it's not them, and and they don't know um, who it could be. I mean, it's a part because Norfolk. There are so few Norfolk terriers in the country. It's um, you know, I, I at least I, I'm I'm hoping I'm getting a good track now of, of everyone that lives in our area, um, so that. Um, uh, so we have a possible sighting. I can ask them, you know, was that you? Do you know who it might be? And then I can know to rule it out straight away or not. This we haven't been able to rule out. Uh, but that was a couple of weeks ago now. We put posters up in the area. The National Trust Ranger, bless him, is looking out for us. Um, and, uh, you know, and an awful lot of people in the area who say they walk there a lot of looking out. So I can only assume that whoever it is hasn't gone back because I can't believe he would have gone back and not been seen so um i'm just hoping that he might and then we can you know confirm or rule out there was another sighting in oh no i forgot it begins with an s but it's near hern bay in kent swale cops somewhere like that i'm afraid i don't know that part of the country at all but that's okay maybe... you can go into the comments after just so people yes, can, I can look really it up so a lady um, about three weeks ago said she saw two Norfolk Terriers um, there uh, near the post office um, and um, she's never seen them before. I don't know any Norfolk owners in that part of the country, so I don't have anyone to contact um, to, to rule them out. But, um, but she's very kindly put posters up in that post office and various places around the town. And Tina and I have posted to various Facebook groups in the area. And just asking, you know, if anybody has any Norfolk Terriers in that area to get in touch so we can rule them out. Or if they think they may have, have acquired Margin Ruby by mistake, uh, not knowing them, them to come forward. And then last, last, sorry. I, I was just going to say, I, I fully understand it's a really difficult thing. You know, you, you, you've got your dog. It's entirely yours, you know, absolutely legitimately. Um, I, I can understand that sort of you know, that sort of little fear about, oh, God, you know, I don't want to, I shouldn't even be, you know, wh why should I do it? It's very obviously, it's my dog. Here's the pedigree. I bought it, whatever, whatever. But, but it, 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 even if you think it may have been confused, your dog has been confused. Please do come forward because they just, you know, there are so many brilliant people out there who, who, you know, report this, and then everybody's got kind of, you know, jumps on it and starts looking around and whatever. It would save so much time and and everybody's, you know, e effort. So please, it, it, even if you, you know, a hundred percent that it's your dog, of course it is your dog. But you know, if you if you think it may have been mistaken, please contact just so we can, you know. 
it sounds a bit harsh sort of saying remove that from our investigation. It's the same as any crime, though. You know, any crime yeah. that's being investigated, yeah. you have yeah. to rule things out. And, yeah. you know, that's, part that's of people coming forward, you need to rule it out or look into it further. Exactly. Um, but yeah. I, but I, I could understand somebody being a bit hesitant about, about that. So please, please don't be. Please, you know, it will save a huge amount of time if you think, you know, if you've got two Norfolk Terriers and you've walked along that road, and you've heard about it yes we know that they're your dog but it, it would just help us you know by by you know this, this, this i hate all this sort of being suspicious and having to contact people and say were you in this place at this time i feel like i'm invading so many people's privacy and i hate that i i, th I think if anybody was to watch this and show the impact it's had on you and you know you, know, you need to be able to live a normal life again I, I think, you know, anybody with a heart would come forward, whether to help or rule something out. Yeah, yeah. We, we put that on. We, we, we've got different posters for different sort of scenarios. And, and we, we, we put that message. If we've had a sighting, we send the, you know, if you think this is, you know, you, please contact us. So we put a different sort of a, a different poster up to try and put, put that over. But but, you know, again, I, I'm just sort of saying I really do understand I, I think I'd feel a little bit like, oh God, that could be us. Oh, you know, it's it's not that. Just 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 you know, and especially in Norfolk Terriers, because you could easily turn around and say we got it from X, and then you would know who the breeder was, and you know, so that there, there would be a very very easy process to 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 do that. And it wouldn't even be that if somebody phoned up and said, this is our dog. Here's a picture of it. You know, we we've had people we've had people phone up who have received it. Uh, we had the lovely, lovely um, oh, Penny. Penny, who was fantastic, who who was offered a, this was a couple, six months ago now, and and she immediately came on board and said, "I need to know whether or not this is, you know." And she sent us pictures and videos and and stayed in contact, and you know, so a lovely, yeah, you know, she's still, yeah, she's still part of the group and still looking for us, and you know, the dog that she acquired wasn't wasn't one of our dogs so she she now knows that so if, um just just the thought with um any sightings um i mean you might do this already it's just something that's come in my mind so any area that you have a sighting a possible sighting where you need to reel something out um do you also contact all of the vets and the dog wardens in those areas yes certainly in so we we we've hit all of the vets in a in a local in, in Cornwall because there were quite a few sightings in Cornwall because obviously there's you know there's going to be a logical link with it and we're still hearing uh some you know somebody just the other day came in and said they went to the vet and our poster is still up in the vet so I mean that, that that's that's great Giles did a great genius thing and sent them all a laminated poster because he said they're less likely to put it in the bin and I think he was right. It was a genius idea. Yeah, it's just more durable, just, isn't yeah, it? So it gets place. put up. Um, if there's a um, sighting anywhere else in the country, um, would you ring like the local vets in that area and dog wardens? And I would say also rescues. Yeah, you know, we have we have done in the past, but we haven't actually done that recently, and I had forgotten. So that's a good good thought. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, think, I know it's really time consuming, but I know that you have fantastic admin um, that I'm sure will help as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, I, I do feel that there are some rescues taking in possible stolen dogs that have not been scanned properly, or if I hate to say it, that microchips are missing. Um, so I would urge any sighting, just, just have a word with the rescue because a rescue yeah. might recognize them, might have sold them on um you know just anything um yeah. you know, just cover everything really i know yeah. it's really really hard work and but you know you love your girls and yeah. they need to be home but well um just uh to touch on like i see tina towers and just a big shout out to tina towers even for yeah. myself you're a so I, lady interrupt just say that our, uh, the sighting that we're still trying to track down which i'm desperate to find is the couple um in north cornwall who have been seen all over the place by different people um with two norfolk terriers i do feel like i know nearly every norfolk terrier in cornwall um they've all said it's not them um it's a lady with dark hair that described 45 to 55 
Um, the man is tall and slim, balding, and wears glasses, possibly wears glasses. They've got two Norfolk Terriers, which two different people tell me that are the absolute spit of Margie and Ruby. And these are people who know Norfies so you know they get the, they can see you know to, I think to a lot of people a red Norfolk Terrier is a red Norfolk Terrier but but two of these people you know know the breed um and, and we really need to we've been looking for this couple since September we've posted in every area because it's in Cornwall we've driven down we put posters up in every area that's been seen we've shared fo local Facebook groups Newquay is one of the key places and Newquay Trader ran an advert for us in the hard copy um, paper and um, for two, two or three weeks in a row they ran it and nothing absolutely nothing and uh, you, know, you we think it could be possible, I was thinking do you think it could be possible they don't actually live there but they might have like um, a mobile home or a caravan they go to some weekends yeah i mean it's cornwall so it's it's, it's very very likely you know that, that, that they they come down just you know those weekends and they yeah so it's it, it you know that that's one of the problems i think you know and, and again particularly in lockdown when the girls went you know the world came to cornwall that that for those two three months you know and and it, it's so I, I think that is yeah that is likely so all you can really do is just keep up the campaign in that area and hope that they will you know, see them or, or, or yeah. pick up on it. During um, one of what them. about um, like holiday camps and um, or just like caravan sites? Um, have you been giving them posts also? It's on my to-do list and I haven't done it. And um, um, well, the lovely, the lovely Sarah Tyler just just mentioned it again to me yesterday, and I was like, yes, it's on my to-do list, but I. I, yeah, I haven't. I've, um... Especially with the summer coming up as well, you've obviously got people from all over the country going to these, yeah. um, you know, and they can then be taking that thought away with them to whatever yeah. area. Um, so it, it, it's something. Um, I, I know it's just another thing on your list to do, but no, I but, but it is, yeah, there are twenty-five things on my to-do list, mm. and they is sit there. Yes, it's hard and it's all time and I know. I know. And, um, yeah. But it's a good point because, you know, at the end of the day, you just need to get the poster up in, I'm just thinking out loud here, you know, in the reception area because everybody checks yeah. in. That area. Exactly. So it's not like you're hitting the whole, you just need to, and, and, and again, I, I can't think of any, any, any places where we've been where people haven't been happy to put the posters up for a period of, you know, for a mm. period of time. There's been a few, you know, people who sort of go down the it's it's littering it, it's it's whatever whatever but we, we've got into a routine now where we we take a photograph of everyone we put up and we we geotag it so we know where every single poster has been you know put up mm -hmm. uh, so that, that that that's quite a, a good thing to say to people if they're a bit you know if, if they're a bit like oh you're just bring posters up everywhere you can tell them look these are durable laminated posters they're going to be you know they'll last at least a month two months before they'll even you know you know fall apart or whatever and they're geotagged and you know we know where they all are um so i, I think that that's quite a you know quite an important thing to put across to the very very few people who who are anti anti posters. Yeah. um tina towers just bring her up again uh said that, that you're going to redress the to-do list um, Valerie Monty, share the list with us and we'll take off some of the pressure. Um, Karen Field, a lot of holiday parks are on Twitter. Tag them with your poster and get the word out. Um, Karen's also a brilliant Twitter queen, so I'm sure she'll be willing to help with that. Uh, she's also part of Muddy Pools Crime. Gillian uh, Halpin, we found caravan parks to be very open to taking posters, definitely worth on the to-do list, so yeah. Okay, um, that's brilliant. So, do you want to talk a little bit about the Cornwall show that you're doing? Amazing Cornwall show. So, lovely Valerie Monty approached them on our behalf and asked what they could do to help. And they replied straight away and said, absolutely, that we could have a free stand in their area. So, they've given us an area down in the dog 
sharing arena where um you know there's, there's big dog sharing that goes on at the show i mean the, the cornwall show is huge i mean the showground takes over half an hour to walk across and there's so many people visit the show and so so yes they've given us a, a stand there um and um and we're going to i think we're, we're going to go and camp down there aren't we and um and 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 go and spread the word to as many people as we can about our little girls and you know if, I, I, if they are still in cornwall well of course a lot of visitors also come to the show that's it's a not huge visitor attraction. exactly yeah. yeah i mean they'll come from all over the country yeah. so yeah. but just going back to the holiday parks you know you've got from scotland right down to cornwall yeah. Um, yeah. and they can yeah. take the image back with them you know yeah. um i um, mean um, any any help that you would need for the shows maybe put on the group um you know I'm, I'm sure you'll have an influx of people wanting to help you um i've offered i can obviously do something for money cause crime and um, even if it's well, right I, I want to make it I, 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 and that's that's the thing I, I i want to make it a bit more than you know i, I think this has come on the back of um talked to rick the other day um uh from justice for reggie and you know he, he's just inspirational so I want to try and make the stand a bit more just a bit more than just margie and ruby i want to make it a you know a point of contact for anybody who has or may you know suffer from from what's what's happened to us and uh make it aware of um you know the support groups that are out there such as money pools crime I, I, I want to make contact with Devon Cornwall Police and see if they can just, you know, to say, look, you're doing, you've done an amazing job. And so I want to try and make it a bit more than just Margie and Ruby. I want to make it, you know, the the, the experience is the wrong word, but you know, the 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 the, 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 the yeah, the experience that that we've been through, and and just, you know, make the whole make the awareness of it there and right across the board. You know, the the, the dog theft, puppy farms uh you know registration of dogs all of it you know, illegal, you know people call a jigsaw puzzle that i always say i call it a jigsaw puzzle that needs yeah, to fix you can't yeah. just um, address one part of it the whole yeah. lot needs to be yeah. addressed so it's just an opportunity we're going to have a stand there and we we can put all these things and just talk to people and you know get them to understand you know i was thinking the other day you know we we, we you know i remember pet shops being banned from selling live pets, you know, certainly puppies and kittens and whatever. And then I think it went, you know, eventually I think it stopped at hamsters and bits and pieces, you know, uh, and, and, and it's kind of like, well, when that happened, so why can we now do it online, which is even less regulated than those pet shops used to be. So 30 years ago, we recognized that that was, you know, absolutely an inappropriate way to, to, to market puppies and cats and and you know tortoises if you remember because they were being ripped out of the out of civil you know out of, out of the world and then surviving one winter in the uk um so that was a good thing so why surely we remember that why the hell are we still doing it on the internet you know yeah yeah so i mean right. if, if i had my right. way i would ban all animal sales but you know yeah. uh, i know rick's yeah. doing his best to get them regulated but, so um, i want to get on my soapbox and say things like that no, good, good on you and we we see a lot of owners that are you know going through the pain that you are you turn the pain into helping others um you know it, it's there's no words for what any of you are going through um i just wish there was more we could do and just click our fingers and you know have it all the dogs back but can only well, do yeah. so much and i'm just i'm a big sort of advocate for all groups working together because i yeah. think together is where changes will be made yeah. um a standalone group can't do everything um you know and i'm always open to anybody working alongside muddy pools crime because there's no egos in this it is only and i repeat only about owners and animals that is it end of story yeah. um well you've been great i say you've been great tonight i wish we were talking about obviously another subject and hopefully one time it'll be 
Margie and Ruby in your arms being reunited. And I hope that day is very, very, very soon. Um, you know you have the support of Muddy Pools Crime anytime. You've been amazing, Lisa, and, yeah. and so many others. And mm -hmm. Tina. I know, and I know that your admin are um, yeah, admin amazing. Yeah. And the whole team. The yeah. whole team. We, we are so lucky to have so many amazing people by our sides through this. I know. Well, um, I'll put the, obviously, the slideshow into the comments also. So if anybody wants to go through the photos and the videos, please do get them shared around, get these girls home. Um, anyone with information that is watching now or in the future, this will also be shared on YouTube and Twitter. Um, we ask you all to share it around me through as much as possible as well. Um, love the jumper. I've just realized um, poor Ruby keeps disappearing. Like, like she oh. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, just just please keep getting the girls' faces out there. Um, you know, we, we, we've got to get them home. Um, I will be, as I say, I do hope the girls are found before Altogether Tavern. Uh, but the girls' poster will be up there. Uh, for those that don't know, I do act as well and write in a comedy. And I am playing Margie in All Together Tavern, um, named after Margie. And we also have a Ruby in it also. But um, as I say, I do hope the girls are home way before we film. Um, but thank, thank you me. again. Um, you know, we can bring you back on if you have any other sightings just to give updates on those um maybe we can put some maps and that sort of thing on a presentation for you uh just just please everybody let's all work together and get margie and ruby home okay um is there anything else angela and giles you want to say before we go no other than thank you yeah so kind. We're, we're, no need to that we're all with you you have so much support eyes and ears all around the country um, obviously, we're starting Muddy Paws Crime Island as well, because I know it's a big crossover between UK and Ireland with dog theft. Oh. We want to get as many contacts over there as well and get all the stolen dogs in the UK and vice versa crossed over. So everyone's looking everywhere. But thank you again um, and um, stay on for a couple of minutes so we can do our goodbye. And thank right. you, everybody, for watching. Please, please share. Please, please let us help. Let us help. But please help us get uh, Margie and Ruby home. Thanks.